Hey, hey everyone, welcome to Expert Media Show. This is your host and teacher, Tony Ladig, and welcome to session six. Today we're going to talk about AI landscapes or artificial intelligence generated landscapes. And to that end, our sponsor today is a course that I taught last year called Deep Dive AI Landscapes. And it's a lot of fun. It's four modules. We really dug into some great technology and resources that you can use to literally create photorealistic landscapes from nothing. Courtesy of Skynet. <laughs> no, just kidding. Courtesy of artificial intelligence, which is super cool and scary all at the same time. So I thought it'd be fun to revisit this topic today. Uh, as part of Expert Media Show, just to kind of dig in a little bit deeper. Uh, for some of you who aren't familiar with the technology that we're going to talk about today, we'll, it'll serve as a great introduction for you. So thanks to new AI technologies like GANs, uh, which stands for Generative Adversarial Networks, we now have the ability to custom generate photorealistic landscapes. It's a mouthful. And I don't want to take a lot of time here getting into all the tech side of it. I actually explained it in the training that we taught last year, but it's pretty amazing how this is evolving. You've probably heard the phrase used in media called deep fakes. And in some respects, the underlying technology with what we're going to be looking at today is related to the same technology that some are using to create deep fake photos and deep fake videos. In other words, they look realistic, except that they're not. And essentially the process that we're using here today is uh, there's a specific program that we're, we're gonna use. It's web-based, it's free to use, and I'll be sharing that in the next slide. But we're gonna use the software to generate a landscape based on a segmentation map that you create. So the way a segmentation map works is you have colors that represent certain things. In this case, since we're producing landscapes, there is a specific color that represents grass, one that represents dirt or mountains or sky or water or whatever the case may be. And then you just paint these little maps of where you want the water to be. Then the software, the AI reads that and says, oh, okay, so you want sky here? Well, here's some skies that I have, and then it will custom insert sky based on how you've painted the image. Once you get a landscape that you like, you then export that image result. These are typically low resolution. The program that we're going to be working with today, uh, the output resolution is 512 pixels square, which is not very large at all which is why I typically up res those images to a higher resolution. And I'll share with you the software that I use to do that. And then import the uh, into a photo to art app of your choice. And I'm going to share one of my personal favorites here um, as we get into this. So that's the basic process that we're going to get into during the training today. As I mentioned, GAN results are low res, 512 pixels, that's it, which is very, very small. If you wanted to use the images for print, with print resolution typically being 300 dots per inch, if you divide 512 by 300, you're not even at two inches square, which is extremely small, especially if you wanted to use the image for like a book cover or in a magazine or whatever the case may be. So you're going to need to upscale the result to a higher resolution. And the program of choice that I use, there are several options that are out there. I prefer Topaz Gigapixel AI. It actually uses a similar underlying technology as the same AI that we're using to generate the landscape. Uh, so it uh, obviously in an image editor like Photoshop or Photopea or one of those, uh, Affinity Photo, you can up res images very, very easily. But the result isn't necessarily one that you're going to want versus using a software like this, especially this particular one, 
where it's using artificial intelligence to upscale or up res an image and it's much sharper much cleaner looking the results are pretty phenomenal then uh, once the image has been scaled up that's where the photo to art software uh, can come into play to turn it into art or you can still maintain the realism of the photograph, not like you're going to shoot with your digital SLR, but it's still pretty surprising. Uh, one of my favorite programs to use is Jixi Pix Impresso Pro, and this is a program that I've talked about a lot. I'm a huge fan of Jixi Pix products. I own them all. Same with Topaz Labs. I own all of them because they're really amazing. Uh, the cool thing about Impresso Pro is that the styles that it uses are based on uh, traditional oils and acrylics. So like if you're a painter, um, that's the same kind of result that you're going to get out of the uh, this software. And we're going to go through this entire process in demo form here in just a moment. So these are three, <coughs> excuse me, three images that I generated using the software that we're going to get into today. And um, actually, I just realized I deleted a slide earlier, and I must have deleted the slide that had the actual URL for the software that we're using. That's sad. So I'll tell you what it is here in just a moment. Um, but these are, are three different images that I generated a while back uh, in their original form, so 512 pixel square. And you can see the diversity that you can uh, really get out of these programs. What I love about it is, like here, this one in the middle, you can see that there's actual reflections of the sky and the mountains and the trees and everything in the water. The software determined that those reflections should exist. Like I didn't paint those in. It just naturally happened, which quite frankly, I, don't, I have no idea how on earth it even did that, but it, it figured it out somehow. But you can see uh, it, uh, you'll you'll really understand better how this whole thing works as we get into the software. And then um, these are two examples of uh, images that I scaled up and then imported into Impresso Pro and converted into paintings. And uh, really cool in results. You would not know in looking at these images that they were initially generated using AI software. You just wouldn't know. So I'm going to switch over here. The program that we're using is created by NVIDIA and it's called Galgan Beta. And I'll have the link in the description box or somewhere in there. Uh, but this is it in its basic form. Uh, you can see over here on the left, we have the, I lost my mouse. We have the ability to create buildings, uh, different kinds of ground, different types of landscape features and plants. Okay, and each one of these are represented by a different color. You'll see here that as I mouse over, the color shows which, you know, which represents what. So like the sky is blue, the sea is a different shade of blue, snow is gray, stones are like a khaki green, water is a different shade of blue. So there's uh, one thing that's cool is you'll notice we have river, sea, and water, and they will all give you different end results. By default, you uh, whenever you launch the program, you see this uh, setup, and essentially it's sky and water, and that's it. On the right-hand side, you have a blank because we haven't created anything yet. Then you'll notice along the bottom here, we have um it, real landscapes that we're using to create the styles you can see here where you can upload your own style filter these uh landscapes here represent styles and i'll show you what i mean by that let's um create a mountain so i'm just going to select the mountain landscape feature you have different brush uh types they're very basic circle square and diamond and then you can control the brush size. You don't have to be fancy about it or anything like that. You can just paint in a mountain. And by the way, there's a brush feature and a fill feature. So I can um, like put in a mountain like this and then switch over to fill and just click it. 
and it fills it automatically. That way you don't have to paint the whole thing. And then if you want to come back in and fine tune it or whatever, you can do that. Okay. So we'll put in like a little second thing. So this is not very sexy looking at all. I think you'll agree. Once you create a basic landscape drawing like this or do whatever you want, then you can click the little arrow that's pointing to the right. Actually, you have to, there's a checkbox down here that you have to check that is their terms and conditions. And then click the little arrow and it renders it. Okay. And pretty realistic looking. But then we can click on these photographs down here and it will re-render the appearance of the image based on the information in these photos. So like if I select this one here, it completely changes the appearance of it. So there's similarities between them, but there's also some differences. Okay, so let's say that I like this this one here the best. And let's say I decide that I want to add in another little mountain deal. Or, or actually, let's, um, I think this color here is C. Yeah, it is. So let's say that we actually want to have the C kind of extend here with the mountain going into the C. So I just make that tiny little change there. Hit the right arrow again. And it makes that change. It's not super clean, but you get the idea. Okay, so we could even paint the the water in here like this, and now all of a sudden it opens up. Opens up. It isn't uh, incredibly realistic looking. So I've found that in cases like this, it's where switching to a different type of water can sometimes make sense. And then I'm going to come back here to the mountain and kind of square that off a little bit. So if you want points or something like that, you can just go back and forth with your um, with your brushes to trap in certain areas. And then if I go to uh, sky, just kind of reshape the mountain a little bit. And that's incredibly sexy looking. So it isn't liking what I'm doing here with the water at all. So I'm going to switch over to C and use the eyedropper and fill it with C and see if that changes it. A little bit different. Um, so another thing that we could do is instead of using mountain, we can put in some rocks. Just change the whole thing to rock. And now it has a completely different appearance to it. Okay, so there's a lot of different uh, adjustments that you can make here. We can uh, add some hills. Just put in a very brief hill. Okay, so it added a tree and some beach and all of that. We can put in... Um, Put a couple clouds in the sky. Doesn't have to be sexy. Uh, switch over here to um, plants. Maybe put a little bit of grass in here. And uh, go to ground and maybe add a little sand. Maybe make the brush size a little bit smaller. Put like a beach kind of area along the edge here. So you can see just as I continue to add more detail, it really fills it in and begins to look a lot more realistic. So it takes a little time, a little trial and error. Um, we can come back here and maybe reshape this mountain a little bit. Actually, we're using rock. I forgot about that. So I'm going to Make my brush a little bit bigger here. Okay, that isn't necessarily doing it for me, so we'll just come back here and 
make it plateau. That's kind of cooler. Okay. And then again, we can just click on a different option here and it will change the appearance based on which one of these style images we choose. Actually, I kind of like this one a lot. That's kind of cool looking, right? So, um, so let's say that you like this style, this segmentation map that you've created. You can download it just by clicking the little download arrow and it'll save it for you. And if you like the image, you can download that also. Okay. Now, all of that's cool. But... I want to show you how to kind of ratchet this up to the next level. And as you can imagine, just with what I've demoed and the different options that you have based on ground and landscape and all of that, you can paint some pretty badass things. And I've done that, but you can really take it to the next level. And I'm going to show you how. Let's come over here and um, go to Pixabay, my favorite public domain website. And let's do a search for, um, like, uh, island landscape. Let's start there with something like that. And, um, uh, I don't necessarily know what I'm looking for here, but just something inspiring. That's kind of cool. So I'm going to download this image and it doesn't have to be super high resolution. So we can just use that one. And, um, I'm going to download this image. And let's find one more here. Let's go with this one. So download this image. Now we can use these downloaded images in a couple different ways. Uh, you'll notice here, upload segmentation map. So that is if you create a segmentation map that you like and download it, this is where you would upload it is into this area. Then you have upload landscape image, upload custom filter image. So with upload landscape image, this is where you can pick a, a landscape like we just downloaded and it converts it into a segmentation map. Okay. So if we hit browse and we go to downloads and find the downloads that we just created or that we made like here's one and here's another. So I'm going to pick this one first and then choose upload. You can see here that it uploaded part of the image. Okay. And then if I click the little right arrow and you'll notice that it just randomly filled in colors. And then if I choose these other styles, it recreates part of this image based on what I uploaded. Okay. So we can come in here and do all kinds of scaling and cropping and stuff like that. Let's find another one that we downloaded. Um, like this one right here. We'll upload it. And it converts it into a uh, segmentation map. If I hit the little arrow, it uses the basic information in the original photo to create a brand new looking image. Okay. That we can then go in and apply different, uh, styles, style filters. But here's what's super cool. 
because it's in the segmentation map environment now and we still have all the landscapes and everything like that we can go in and edit this to our heart's content you know like you can see here we've got grass and hills and rocks and all of that going on let's say that instead of the rocks we wanted to make more of this mountainy so we could just come in here and maybe paint this whole section here as mountains maybe this we'll leave a strip that's just rocks and instead of having it curl in like that we're going to extend it out further and then this uh the C here we'll just bring that in a little bit more like that And so now let's change it up and you can see that there's actually some tree looking things here. Um, but let's say, let's find plants and trees. And uh, there's a little bit of tree stuff happening here, but let's say we want some trees over here as well. So we could just put in some tree, some treeage <laughs> here. And now we've got uh, little trees happening over here. Isn't that amazing? Now, here's another thing that we can do. You'll see here, upload custom style filter. So we can take the same images that we just downloaded and upload them to control the style of the end appearance. So I'm going to upload this and you'll see it inserts it here. So now we can use the original image to control the output of our segmentation map that we created. And in this particular case, I don't think it looks that cool, but we can add different ones that we find. And I'll let you in on a little hint. Let's do this one from New Zealand here upload I'll let you in a little hint let's whoa let's go back here to uh, let's do um, colorful landscape I'm just kind of making this up as we go along um, actually this looks really super cool so let's download this. Uh, browse. Yeah, so essentially it takes some, the essence of these various image styles and applies it to our output. Sometimes you can get really crazy results depending on the options that you pick. Like I'm just choosing landscapes, but we wouldn't actually even have to choose um, landscapes. Like here we've got this ocean scene. It'd be kind of curious to see what our end result would be applying something like that. You would think it would be different, but you never know. Yeah, so it didn't really change it that much. One of the reasons why, though, is because of uh, the current layout that we've got let's uh, change things up here a little bit let's put in some more sky get rid of some of these clouds here change up the mountain ranges a little bit oh look we have a waterfall now that's kind of cool um Put in a cloud there. You can even add in fog. Now fog, I found you have to be really conservative with because a little bit goes a long way. 
as you can see. So um, we can come back here and get just get rid of the fog and come back to the sky, kind of get rid of that. And uh, one thing that I'm going to do, we've got mountain happening here. I'm going to put in a big mountain here. And then come over here and get rid of this part of the mountain. Just kind of flatten it out a little bit. And it completely changes it up again. Now, one thing that you might wonder is um, what would happen if you <clears throat> upload something really kind of wacky. So like rainbow colors. <laughs> I have no idea what's going to happen. We'll find out here directly. Um, so browse. And upload. Oh, interesting. It actually didn't change it that much, but it made the colors more brilliant looking. So there must be something built into the AI that helps control the uh, output and the results that you get to keep it somewhat realistic looking. But you can see just by, <clears throat> excuse me, by comparing these two, like the water especially, with this one that we uploaded versus this one um much different appearance to the to the water so that's kind of cool um let's find another i keep switching that way let's find another um let's see mountains Now this is working with square images. And so as a result, um, it will change up the appearance of things to square. In other words, it will condense it down. Um, you can go in and crop these ahead of time if you want, but um, let's take this one that we just downloaded and use it to generate our uh, segmentation map. upload okay so not very sexy looking now the clouds are cool I would probably be inclined to add in like a lot of uh, rock and stuff. You can tell I'm really taking my time here. <laughs> okay. And we could even take like a, put a, have a river run through it. <laughs> And uh, let's see, let's go back to rock so we can get it. Now what's interesting is it put the water in here as rushing down. So what that tells me, believe it or not, is that the software is anticipating height. Isn't that crazy that it would do that? Um, I think it's kind of crazy. So you can see different results depending on which uh, style you're using or applying to it. So let's say that we like this image here, okay? And we wanna do something with it, kind of blow it up to the next level, take it to the next level, or maybe this color one here.
No, I don't like that one as much. We'll use this one. So I'm going to download this. And then uh, I'm going to open uh, Gigapixel. AI Gigapixel. We don't want to install updates now. So I'm going to hit open and then find the image that we just downloaded. I'll go and I'll put, here it is, 20. So open this up. And you can see that this is a zoomed in version at, uh, at 4x. Okay, so this is basically what it would look like uh, to scale it in Photoshop versus the end result here using AI Gigapixel, which is much sharper. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, um, and I'll show you why. Let's come over here to the rocks and the clouds so that it can generate the results. So you can see much, much sharper detail and all of that, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to click Start, and... So it's blowing it up by a factor of four. That makes it uh, 2048 by 2048, which is decent. I mean, it's more usable. It's basically seven inches square, which we could use for book covers or whatever. So we're done with that. And then we're going to open up um, Impresso Pro and uh, find our image that we just output. And here's the original 512. I wonder where it output it to. I probably should have paid attention to where I output it to. Maybe I say to the desktop. Uh, yeah, here it is. So um, here's the 2048 version. Click open. And it turns it into a painting. Now, th this initial result, I'm not really feeling. But the cool thing about this program is that we have a lot of presets. So we could use like, um, like one of the uh, presets that are more for landscapes over here that can introduce more color and stuff like that. Um, just to get a really cool end result. And I'm just going with the basic presets. We could, um, there's a lot that you can do in this program that can really add a level of uh, coolness to the end results here. And I'm not going to take a huge amount of time to get into all of the intricacies of this software. I've taught that in other settings. But you can see here, uh, we can get some very interesting output results. And of course, any resolution issues that existed just vanish with this software, which is one of the reasons why I love it. But we can control um, output. We can control um, how color interacts with it. We can control detail. Um, let's pick this one here. This one doesn't really have a lot of features to it, so it doesn't necessarily demonstrate fully just how awesome we can, uh, the awesome results that we can get with this. But you can see here, this particular preset that we're using is made up of three different layers. One is the canvas, um, and then two different uh, painting styles. If we decide we don't really like the brush strokes, we can come in here to canvas and remove the brush strokes completely just by turning canvas strength down uh, on the different layers. We turn it down here and also uh, here for canvas strength. And then here, well, actually it's already down. We can also control, like, um, you can see here an artistic finish is being applied, which is part of what's giving it 
its coloration, we can click on that and change it to something completely different. Like instead of number seven, change it to number 18 and it will impact the end result. Okay. Uh, if we went with something like number 16, it's going to apply like a more brownish sense to it. We can uh, increase stroke sizes, which will also impact how the final painting result appears. And we can do that on each level. We can come in and limit the art palette. So right now it's using the full palette of the original image. Uh, we can switch over to limited and it will redefine the colors based on a limited color palette, which you can edit completely or use some of the presets. And it just changes it up. Okay. Um, we can also control the bristle style and how the paint is applied, whether it's more pronounced or not. And we can control, like just like regular painting, bristle strength, uh, bristle depth. Um, and we have the ability to control all of these features on each one of the different painting layers. If you want to add additional detail, you can do that just by clicking the plus and choose a different option. Like let's say we wanted to make it look oldish. We could choose aged paint and it puts in cracks and stuff like that. Um, we can uh, maybe make the cracks longer. We can um, increase the variation. Maybe we don't like the white, so we could change them to like a, uh, maybe a, a brown. Increase the irregularity. We also can control layer opacity. So if we don't want it to be super strong, we can do that. And, uh, you can see here how the cracks appear. This is the original. And this is the end result. Okay. Uh, so a lot of really cool things that we can do. And then if you like this particular style and you want to apply it to other images, you can do that very easily. Just come down here to where you see the plus and the minus. Click plus and we'll call it, um, old landscapes and click OK and it will save it uh, into your palette over here okay right there it is old landscapes so I have a number of presets that I've saved like uh, this one here so doesn't really look great for this particular image but you get the idea and then um, once you get an image the way you like it, you can click the little outbox or come to file and choose save photo and choose save. It'll bring up a dialog box for you to name the final image and then it will uh, render it. So we'll call this uh, Final AI landscape. I'm going to do one more just kind of real quick to show you the process again. We uh, had saved a different image earlier, so I'm going to bring up Gigapixel again. And uh, let's see. So we have this one here, this output that we created earlier. And you can go up higher than 4x. I mean, it'll do 6x or whatever you want. But you can see the difference in the detail. Like if you compare the left side to the right side, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Uh, so we'll click start and it'll uh, process that image. You can see, uh, you can follow along up here at the top to see the output when it, whenever it's done. So it's pretty quick. Free up some memory here. So I'll close this 
and then here in Impresso Pro, I already have it open. We'll just uh, take the new image and open it up. Now it's still very pixelated and all of that. Like if you look at the original, you can see that you wouldn't be able to use this photographically at all. But uh, from a painting perspective, that's definitely usable. So it's just a matter of finding the right preset that you like or start uh, use a preset as a starting point and then adjust it accordingly. Okay. Um, I like playing, playing with them all. You never quite know what you're going to find until you find it. So, uh, after before pretty cool end result. Okay. And I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel. That way you get a notify whenever I uh, upload the new image or the new video. So you'll know whenever it's ready for you. And, um, as I mentioned, also you can, uh, come over to the Facebook group, of course, and access the YouTube channel from here. But I also post a lot of interesting bits of information too. Like right now I'm running a poll on, uh, future ideas for teachings and trainings and stuff like that, which right now looks like, uh, print on demand e-com product design is winning and shooting videos for YouTube are winning. Those are the top two with art creation strategies coming up close behind. So, um, there you go.